thank you all so much for joining us here today. My name is Aaron Stein and I'm a staff scientist here at the Center for Functional Nanomaterials, or the CFN. Here at the CFN, we're studying materials on the nanoscale. The nanoscale is a size scale from 100 down to 1 nanometer. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter, so very, very, very small. This is the size scale where light interacts with matter. It's the size scale of the chips inside your computer or the phone in your pocket. It's a size scale of many biological functions. It's also the size scale of the COVID-19 virus, which is about 100 nanometers. We are studying all of these kinds of materials and more here at the CFN. And today I'm going to take you around for five different stops and talk about the kinds of science we're doing. So come on, let's go. One of the important ways we study nanomaterials at the CFN is with x-rays. X-rays are good for looking at nanomaterials because they look at things on a very, very small size scales and they don't destroy the material they're looking at, which helps us to get information that we wouldn't be able to get through other means. Luckily for us, we're located right across the street from one of the brightest sources of X-rays in the world, the NSLS-2, or the National Synchrotron Light Source 2. So we have experiments that run over at the NSLS-2, and we also have X-ray experiments that run here in the CFN building. One example of this is this machine behind me, which is a SACS machine, which is a small angle X-ray scattering machine. This machine looks at the way X-rays scatter or interact with the material they're looking at and give us some information about how that material is arranged and also the shape and sizes. The nice thing about it is that it's non-destructive so we can look at materials that we wouldn't be able to look at through other means. At the CFN, we're experts in self-assembly. One way our scientists use self-assembly is through DNA. Yep, the same DNA that you learn about in biology, we can use as a nanomaterial to guide the formation of structures of nanoparticles. Another form of self-assembly is by using polymers or a special kind of plastic to form structures that would be almost impossible to form through other means. We can use the sacs to look at how these materials are structured and understand how they're formed and also what applications we might be able to use them in. Next, we'll be looking at another way we use x-rays to study materials at the nanoscale. One of the main things we want to do at the CFN is look at and characterize materials on the nanoscale, which is very challenging because material, these materials are very small. It means we can't look at them with conventional microscopes you might know from your school. So we have specialized microscopes like this one behind me to look at materials at a very, very small size scale, actually down to the atomic size scale. These microscopes are called transmission electron microscopes, and they use very high energy beams of electrons to look at materials at the nanoscale. At the CFN, we have five TEMs. Each of them has different characteristics for looking at different kinds of materials in different kinds of environments. This microscope is special because this allows us to look at materials in operando, which means we can look at the materials while they're working. This is important because while we can always look at materials on a very, very small scale and understand the structure of these materials, it's also important to know how that structure relates to its function. For example, in a battery. We can look at materials in a battery under very, very high resolution all the way down to the atomic scale. But it's even more important to look at these materials while they're doing the thing that a battery does, for example, charging up or discharging. This allows us to see why some batteries might fail after a certain amount of time, as we all know from our phones. There are many, many applications we can look at with this inoperando microscope, and so users will come to the CFN with their problems, and we can help solve them all the way down to the atomic scale. And for our next stop, we're going to look at a different kind of microscope. Another type of microscope we use to study materials at the nanoscale is a scanning probe microscope, like this one behind me. This is actually a microscope. This is a low temperature scanning tunneling atomic force microscope, and it uses a very sharp tip to probe the surface of materials. This is a custom built microscope. It works at very low temperatures. This microscope allows us to look at materials in ways that we can't do any other way. Use scanning this probe we can image individual molecules and see the way different atoms are incorporated into these molecules, which uh, is useful for a lot of different applications. One example, a user from Exxon is looking at petroleum in ways they can't look in any other way. 
So when we have petroleum that comes out of the ground, there's a lot of pollutants in there and it is refined to try to get as many of them out so they don't go into the atmosphere. But it's impossible to get all of them out. And so there are molecules like sulfur and nitrogen. When that gasoline is burned, it goes into the atmosphere and causes pollution. This microscope allowed Exxon to go through and look at individual molecules and see how those sulfur and nitrogen were bonded into the petroleum molecules and will point them towards ways of better refinement to reduce the pollution that goes into the atmosphere when those fuels are burned. This is one of many applications that can be used with this custom built microscope here at the CFN. Next, we're going to go look at a way that x-rays can be used to study nanomaterials in different ways. Another way we use x-rays to study materials at the nanoscale is with a machine like this, which is an XPS, which stands for X-ray Photoelectron Spectroscopy. This machine is specialized to look at surfaces. Surfaces are very important in chemistry because that is where the action happens, surfaces and interfaces. It's where atoms of one material meet atoms from another material. And so that's usually where there's some sort of interaction that we're interested in studying. One example of this is catalysis. Catalysts are important for a whole range of applications, particularly in, the, in energy applications. For example, fuel cells in the next generation of automobiles. The reaction in a catalyst happens on the surface. And so we're very interested in studying the chemistry of that surface and how it relates to how the catalyst functions. Of course, we can look at this under very, very high vacuum, so the vacuum of outer space, but this doesn't help us to see how that catalyst might work in the real world. So we have a special XPS, an ambient pressure XPS, which operates at pressures closer to what we find in the environment that we live in day to day. And this allows us to look at catalysts and the chemistry of their surface in a more real world environment. Next, we're gonna to go to the CFN clean room where we can make things all the way down to the nanoscale. So far we've seen many ways that we can use microscopes and specialized instruments to look at things on the nanoscale. One of the other things we do at the CFN is make things on the nanoscale. I mentioned earlier self-assembly, which is a way of materials assembling on their own, something called bottom-up fabrication, but many times we want to make things more custom and we're going to use top-down fabrication or lithography to do that. We can draw designs using electrons, ions, ultraviolet light or lasers to make patterns from down to tens of nanometers up to many, many microns. So scanning many different size scales for different applications. Then we can turn those drawings into different materials of all sorts, depending on the application. CFN users use a nanofabrication facility over a wide range of applications. People are interested in looking at the next generation of materials that might go into your computers, including quantum computers. People are interested in making structures that copy what they see in nature to try to capture some of those amazing things that Mother Nature has come up with on its own. People are interested in uh, looking at materials that might go into your solar cells or displays. Pretty much anything that our researchers can think of, we can help them make inside the CFN nanofabrication facility. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed our tour of the Center for Functional Nanomaterials.